You are probably like millions of other people around the world who have this company's product in your kitchen cabinet right now. The company is Quaker and the product is its oatmeal. However, what you may not realize is this company's rich history and innovation from mergers and acquisitions to design, packaging, distribution, trademarking, manufacturing, and marketing, Quaker has established first around the world. In this segment of Frame, we will explore the evolution of Quaker through art. With us right now on Frame is collector Heather Wagner. Thanks so much. Hi, good to for see you, Beth. For joining us, us over. This collection is so extensive and just mind-boggling. Where did it start? How did it start? <laughs> Who started it? Well, this is my father's collection, actually. Um, and my father passed away a year ago and uh, left this collection to my mother and I. And um, well, I put it out today just so you could get a good look at everything. And uh, as I was putting it out, I kept thinking about, my gosh, he really has a great collection. I mean, it's yes. fantastic. And it all started with, and that's an actual Quaker puffed rice box that somebody gave to him as a gift. And he loved it and he was fascinated. And he's been a collector for many years, collecting um, beer cans and all kinds of breweriana and, different uh, kind of advertising things and so this was right up his alley and uh, he worked for Quaker Oats for I think 40 years and um, this was something that he really you know dove into collecting. This is really fascinating yeah. so let's work it's real back rice in here. <laughs> and there's still rice in here. Yeah. Now did he design product packaging? He was a uh, yes he was a um, packaging engineer for Let's talk about what most people know, which is the oatmeal. The oatmeal. And this is the one most the people know right yes, here. Yes, <laughs> exactly. The Quaker man was very intentionally symbolic mm -hmm. for their packaging. Mm -hmm. Why was that? Well, and it's kind of interesting, in some of the early uh, Quaker oat uh, product, he has this little scroll that would say pure on oh. it. Right here. Yeah, yes. and um, you know, there's always the picture of the uh, oats and that kind of stuff. And then it um, went from that just to the symbol of him, and which I believe became a registered trademark. They were the first company to trademark a right. cereal brand. Right. They really started that. We also have the Mother's Oats, which is a, another Quaker brand. And then they started from, um, I, I was just uh, talking about how I really like to look at the art as I'm an artist. Um, I love to see the, how the evolution of the art on the front of the package. Uh, changes. Um, yes, with the you know, times with uh, the we'll times. Yeah, we have the woman and her little son, and um, what they're wearing and how that changes throughout time. Kind of goes to more modern clothing, and then it ends up yeah, let's, let's looking her. almost like a Quaker oats oat too. Like the Quaker mm -hmm. man himself, who's yeah. graduated. And, and so that's, that's kind of interesting. Their outfit. Look at how yeah. simple not only the packaging becomes over time, right. but how streamlined their wardrobe is. Right. Makes. Oh yeah. This box has a cup and saucer in it. They were one of the first to include these promotional items, that, you know, like Cracker Jacks, where you buy a box of Cracker Jacks, you get a ring or whatever. It's well, Quaker is one of the blue. first, yes. and this one was uh, the cup and saucer. With yeah, Bonnie, blue. Bonnie Blue cup and saucer. And there's all kinds of these things. There's little Quaker uh, buckwheat ones, and uh, here's some other kind of stuff. Here's one of the Cedar Rapids plant on oh, it from beautiful. Iowa. Yeah. Look at that. Um, and then it's also kind of interesting to me that they put aluminum in there. Oh, yes. This one is with aluminum wear. <laughs> Which is really smart, but that yeah. ties into their marketing. I know lighter. there was some internal friction over their marketing budget, right. but the chief marketing officer figured out that he better learn how to speak to women who were running the household right. in order to get the Quaker brand into the kitchen and become part of the family's staple. Yeah, and then uh, that also kind of leads into some of these smaller packages. Um, these are ones that the salesmen would go around from you know farm mm -hmm. to farm, and yeah, uh, one too. yeah, this actually still has stuff in it. Still has oats in it. Yeah, and they use these as trial size. Yep, it's a free tasters. Sample. Free samples <laughs> hook you into the product, which yeah. was quite ahead of its time in that day, actually. Yeah, and a lot of times they would go to uh, whoever the cook was. Um, if they had any kind of help in the in the uh, farm or on the residence. Let's talk about a subject of great controversy in American culture.
culture, yeah. which is Aunt Jemima. Some of the controversy, I believe, you know, comes from how Aunt Jemima was portrayed um, mm -hmm. as someone who was uneducated, who was, you know, more dirty and, and things like that. And she changed throughout American history yes, she did. Um, as American history changed. Right. So the civil rights movement, yeah. et cetera. Now, this was a really fun um, item <laughs> from the standpoint of marketing and promotion not in, in art as well. It's actually a puzzle. And so the key is to separate this package from the top. Um, <laughs> but you sent in four cents to, to receive this life story of Aunt Jemima. And that's one thing that Quaker is really great at and still is today mm -hmm. is telling stories and using poetry and, and other storytelling methods in their marketing. Right. And reading in the book, uh, Aunt Jemima, there's one woman, and that she, this looks like the woman, Nancy Green, who was the Aunt Jemima for over three decades. And that was her job, to travel throughout the Midwest and small towns mm -hmm. throughout the country to cook breakfast and show housewives and others how to uh, create the best pancakes mm -hmm. using yeah. the Aunt Jemima mix. Right. So these are some of the items. It's really fascinating. Right. And then there is a letter over here. Aunt Jemima stationery from the Quaker Oats Company. And it's something that you would send away for when you put your little box tops together. And this was an Aunt Jemima doll. So it was a pattern for the Aunt Jemima doll in the front and back. And you just sew it together and you got your instant Aunt Jemima doll. So anyway, he had several of these that, um, you know, different dolls or different, but this was a character from uh, Quaker Oats. So that's kind of a neat thing. On a lighter note, moving away from Aunt Jemima, yeah. but talking about dolls, yes. <laughs> Quaker used dolls in cartoons. Obviously, we all mm -hmm. know who this gentleman is. Yes, Captain Crunch. Now, and then we that, also have, then, um, who's this? this is Quake, and this is Quisp. And <laughs> Quisp and Quake. I, well, you know, I don't know. I think they might have, but um, he was one that you could send in and sew and make. Um, and this is Quisp, and he's kind of a American icon to a lot of people. Oh. He, he, boy, he sells on eBay lots of stuff. Really? He is, uh, he has his own cereal, Quisp cereal. He's from outer space. And then this is King Vitamin. <laughs> so. Which, when we were looking through your collection, right. yeah. Quaker used very early on the health oriented mm -hmm. message in their advertising. Oh yeah. You know, it's the the food to fuel your brain and to make you stronger and in some respects right. superior without saying it. Right. Getting back to the messaging yeah. and the infusion of be strong mm -hmm. and healthy. Oh, yeah. They created recipe books mm -hmm. to reinforce their products. Oh, sure. This was uh, before the famous oatmeal cookies. You know, this was uh, gingerbread and spice cake and chocolate cake and coffee cake and a uh, picture of the Cedar Rapids plant. Oh, that's so um, yeah. Beautiful. But it's, uh, you know, uh, the recipes at Quaker Rose, they really did evolve um, because now everyone knows the oatmeal cookies are huge. And of course, that's what's on the front of the modern recipe book. Um, I know my kids request them, <laughs> and uh, they're great. But this was a, a lot of baking, a lot of rolls and um, breads, oatmeal bread, uh, and it would always just kind of show what you needed, and then it would have a little picture of the Quaker Oats box there. So this was kind of a neat one, and I have several that's, of these. That's neat. And comparing the recipe content and this right. modern version, and the, like the images, there's the cranberry mm -hmm. orange bread. And how it's changed. Yeah. But what's consistent is the story of Quaker Oats and the Quaker Man, which mm -hmm. I think is pretty fascinating. So <laughs> they don't they don't let you forget a oh, Quaker yeah. man. <laughs> okay. So those are some really fun items. Yeah. And that was of course geared towards women right. because they ran the household. Right. But then they soon figured out another tactic yeah. ahead of their time again on how to continue to keep the that's right. the product in the house. And so you have an example of that. That would be the kids, because when it comes <laughs> right down to it, the kids are what's gonna eat uh, the good oatmeal. And here's a product that Quaker had at one time, it was called Toy Oats. Um, and there was a toy in every package. And so I thought, I think this is a really uh, an interesting product, just to yeah. show that, hey, we're gonna start putting toys in here instead of 
uh, you know, the Bonnie blue cup and saucer because really when it comes right down to it, we want the kids to eat it. And there's a toy in the package and that just started the whole uh, cereal and you find a toy in there. And yes. that one, I know when I was a yes. kid, that was the coolest thing ever is what's sure. in the package? What toy do we get? We had all kinds of stuff from little, um, I remember I got a little terrarium one time. You could put, <laughs> there was dirt in there. And, um, other times you'd get like, you know, tops or games. Right. Um, so this was kind of one of the, uh, beginning of that whole movement. Here are some of these Petty John's uh, ones. What I thought some of these were kind of interesting back, you know, to show the time uh, mm -hmm. that it was with some of the art and this. Mother Goose and this kind of stuff for oh, the, yes. um, you get a Mother Goose book for oh. the little guys, you know. Oh, you're yeah. promoting literacy. Right, right. Which is great. You, you see how they, yeah. they really tie into, but I think they really mm -hmm. expound upon a slice of American life right. and just make it huge. And Petty John's was a huge brand for uh, Quaker. How does this collection make you feel? Oh, I'm awfully proud of my dad. Um, that's one thing that uh, I, and I think that one of the reasons people collect is because they're proud of that particular thing. And I know my dad was very proud to work at Quaker Oats. Um, it was a huge part of my life growing up and my, um, just seeing all these things brings back a lot of memories for me and uh, just makes me feel like my dad is very close. So that's really a neat thing. And um, just, you know, when I was a little kid and uh, they used to be able to take us into the plant and sure. get to see the all the stuff being made or he'd bring home uh, boxes of generic um, new cereal they invented. And you guys taste this with all your friends and tell me what you think, you know. <laughs> Um, so there's a lot of um, memories for me. And as far as collectibles overall, because you know sometimes, uh, well, my grandmother she used to collect mm -hmm. salt and pepper shakers. Okay. And I think for a long time I didn't quite understand why people would collect things. Mm -hmm. But what do you think about collectibles as an art form? Oh, Since absolutely. You this and you're an artist. Well, yeah, and um, also I have he has another collection that we didn't really talk about at all because we're doing Quaker, but he has another whole one of this Bruriana I was telling you about. And I look back at the pre-prohibition stuff that he had, mm -hmm. and the artwork is unbelievable. That they did that just to promote beer or Quaker oatmeal or things like sure. that. That just blows my mind. That um, how gorgeous it was. It was really, really nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe one day. <laughs> you know my industry, and you've been a creative director in advertising. Oh, maybe yeah. we'll see a circle back to this really <laughs> exceptional work. Yeah, Something like quality over quantity, really thought through mm -hmm. and messaging and, and the use of imagery. So, yeah, yeah. Well, Heather, thank you for sharing well, your collection with us. Well, thanks for letting me share it. That's uh, absolutely fascinating. Thank and you. And feel so privileged. And hopefully everybody <laughs> watching the show will feel the same privilege that uh, we feel. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. <laughs> Some collectors build their collections from an investment standpoint, others from a sentimental place. Well, regardless of the reason, it's only a matter of time and human nature before you begin to wonder about the value of your collection. In this segment of Frame, we are continuing our conversation about the private Quaker Oats collection, but joining me this time is local expert and graduate certified appraiser, Cheryl Marks. Thanks, Cheryl, for joining me on Frame. My pleasure. Nice to meet you. Likewise, <laughs> and thanks for helping us to understand the extensive collection you've seen and the value of some of the pieces in the collection. So let's talk about your expertise. What is a graduate certified appraiser? Well, there are not many colleges that specialize in appraising, mm -hmm. but I did go to one for two and a half years in the Los Angeles area called okay. the College for Appraisers mm -hmm. and graduated, you know, took all their courses, graduated, also became a part of the local appraising association right. and took what's required, which is called USPAP for doing appraisal reports. And when you're looking to value items, yes. you have to do a lot of digging. A lot of digging. Well, you know you did some, I'm sorry to interrupt <laughs> you, I know you did some digging on a some little pieces bit. Yes. that we sent to you. Yes. So do you want well, to? Well, if we want, only because it, it was very interesting about these two guys. These two, okay, yes. we'll start with these two gentlemen. Okay, well, both of these are Toby jugs. And they made a lot from different companies. This one was made from Woods and Son. Now, many of these companies have been around for centuries, huh. but how you find out 
when to you know when it was actually made is you date it by looking at the marks because the marks mm -hmm. change over the years. This one was approximately in the 40s. Now okay. there's some, you know, the woods, you know, start from the 1800s, but this particular one was produced by Woods and Son in England during the 1940s. Interesting. Now, one of the more expensive, even though they made a lot of Toby jugs and character jugs, mm -hmm. the company was uh, Royal Dalton in England, mm, mm -hmm. and they started, uh, they, they have hundreds of them, and some of them are very valuable still, mm -hmm. and others have value, but not as valuable. Okay. Now, this one was interesting, because this one was a limited edition, and I it was made, that. yes, for the Quaker Oats 80, I believe the 85th anniversary of Quaker Oats in 1984. So this one is, it was in, interesting and easier to get information on because there was a lot of specifics. Yes. For instance, this one, there was a limited edition of 3,500 pieces. This is 2,862 out of 3,500. So this one, I looked up and at, you know when you're pricing things, there's all different levels of pricing. Uh -huh. There can be what we, the book value, and then there can be what we call real value. Now, the wish value of this was anywhere from $350 to $500. Wow. The actual selling on checking on eBay sales and uh -huh. a, a few other places was around $250. Hmm. So it can be, you know, the real selling price can be quite different, much lower than the, the you know, the, the research the, price, yes. Now, this one, this you one, researched, and the value of this It's particular... only about 45. Hmm. This is not a limited edition. The company is actually, you know, old, Easy. but so is Royal Dalton. A few more. Ooh, will you let me know which one of these you researched, well, and then we'll hold them up to or, the camera? Or okay, it. well, I also okay. found some interesting information, because when you're doing research, you're almost, you are studying history. Yes. So I had to look up somewhat of the history of Aunt Jemima, you know, okay. when it Here, started, it how it started, what the name of the company was prior to it being bought by Quaker Oats. Oh. Originally, and it's interesting because this one on the back has the original I'll company. Turn it around. Uh, the original company with Aunt Jemima was R.T. Davis Milling Company, and that was the original one. And yes. this one's special because that's what it is. It has that. So this is one from the original company before it was owned by Quaker Oats. Oh, okay. understand. So Quaker Oats bought the mill in 1926. And this they started this in 1890, the original Aunt Jemima. And it was very interesting. Um, they hired originally um, a former slave Mm -hmm. who was the spokesman, and her name was Nancy Green. Yes. And she became the spokesman, the original spokesman for them in 1890, which I thought was very interesting. And this, I believe, is definitely a caricature Nancy. of her. Of okay. There were different ones, and yes. with throughout the time, they also changed the look mm -hmm. to modernize a little bit. The, you know, now we this one... different Yes, looks here. now, in 1933, now, again, they were bought... They bought A.J. Meals in 1926. In 1933, Quaker Oats hired Ann Robinson for the Chicago World's Fair. And that's when they had their, their you know, they introduced it all. And it became registered in 1937 with her face. So uh -huh. this is, I believe, this is the earlier one because I dated this mm -hmm. through research. And it said this was from 1895. So this was prior to Two. that, you know, okay. that probably was uh, Nancy Green still at that point. Looks pretty similar. Yes, it I looks pretty sure similar to this. Mm -hmm. Now this one, I'm assuming, even though I could not Take find down. the exact, but I'm assuming that this was the next one. So let me, I'm putting you on the spot a little bit. So okay, when, well, when was, researching, beginning the process of researching this, you would read through the pamphlet and... I try to find out any information that's printed on it. 
and I tried to, the dis, you know, the distributor is obviously Quaker Oats. You're gonna look at the graphics to try to date approximately when they were using this mm -hmm. graphic on it and look at, you know, what it is. Now, these were produced, so these are not as scarce as something that wasn't produced to be, you know, go along with something, but right. it's still relatively scarce. Just estimating, yes, I would say the group could be, if this is totally an estimate, around $120. Okay. This one was approximately 45 this one was about 45, and this one I'm just judging in a similar range because I wasn't able to specifically find, find that. that one. I have to look at everything, and I have to look through, you know, with a loop to see the printing, if it's a more modern print, if it's the original, you know, printing. Right. There's a lot of clues that you look for. Okay. And, you know, the one of the main clues is if you look on eBay and the item is not completed, that's somebody's wish list of the price that they want. Oh, that doesn't mean that's the actual price that it, it got. And many times these things don't sell. They can go through, you know, a week cycle mm. or two weeks or a month mm -hmm. and they're still not selling. Mm. So the only way that you can really get any valid information is to see what they actually got upon completion. Are there any other sources that you use that you're there able to There are lots share of other sources. You know, I, I Google everything to see if anything else comes up. Uh -huh. When I'm doing my own appraisals uh -huh. um, there are times I have to pay for specific sites but they're not free as an appraiser that will give you more specific information huh. because a lot of times general information will not give you pricing it'll give right. you history it'll give you you know pictures graphics this and that but it won't give you the pricing part of the story yes but not the you have to pay story. for it <laughs> okay well you know what they say well thank you so you are much for this well. thanks for tuning into this segment of Frank. There's a reason why those extra items not in your shopping list end up in your cart. As we learned in the Quaker Oats segment, consumer product companies understand the power of great design and driving the bottom line. In this segment of Frame, we see the process involved in creating appealing design that compels us to buy products we want and need and those who, well, that just exist. Joining me now is professional graphic design artist, Christiane Kuna. Thank you so much for joining me on Frame. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. We're in your studio and you have an assortment of really great packaging and other design items for us. So let's get down to what makes great design. Well, first I'm gonna talk about graphic design. A good graphic design uh, will be something with a very clear message uh, where uh, the people looking to the design will be going to understand very well uh, what is about the message about the graphic design. Uh, it can be a piece of art or uh, a poster for an event or maybe a logotype mm -hmm. or maybe a, a, a magazine ad. Uh, it has to be uh, very easily understandable. Okay, so um, not a lot of clutter and no. You know, sometimes people put just everything in, you know, an ad, for instance, or on a poster, and that that's not clean design. No, especially because uh, in this, these days, uh, everybody is so overwhelmed with advertisements and with information, so we don't have time anymore. So it has to be in eight seconds. You have to get the message in eight seconds. More than that, it's going to be uh, a waste of time and money uh, because it's not going to be um, efficient. And capture attention and ca yes. capture heart share. Yes. Design of products, I would say, uh, they have to be innovative because we already have so many things in the market, so uh, they have to be, to be innovative and also uh, turn our life easier in somehow or saving us time or, or making our life um, uh, adding praticity or it's fun even huh yes yes even fun okay. so there's always something else always a plus not just like a phone that makes calls but also a phone that has internet access that is easy to carry a lot of function yes. along with style yes. seems to make 
great, great design yes. from my understanding you. Yes. Now, I love your perspective because you have a global perspective. You're originally from Brazil. Do you want to talk about some of the products you've designed yes. during your career? Yes. Which one do you want to start with? There's so many so fun items here. Here are some recent works. Um, uh, for example, this, um, I am a mom of two kids. This water bottle will come with two different kinds of uh, lid, a top. Oh. So one will be for toddlers, which is a sippy cup, and another one will be like a bottle. So moms could uh, just buy these water bottles, uh, which will be a completely uh, uh, safe for kids and they could just drop in the formula or the juice or something else and um, it will be it will transform our life as moms this is seems like it's ergonomically correct yes. and really easy for a child yes. to hold as well as an adult yes very clever oh yes. cool this is another piece this will be uh, a fruit rack okay. so um, there's a there's a quote that says, an apple a day keeps your doctor away. So this is the concept behind this piece. Uh, if it's seven, seven apples, it's about the apples you're gonna uh, eat in a week. And it's very clean, uh, it's very simple. This is what about, uh, we are talking like, you know, like being functional, being cool, but also um, something that is gonna add something for your life. This is really, really fun. It's quite aesthetically appealing without the product and just adding the product in makes it even better. You can take out this section, right? Yes. This is a separately designed item that goes inside. Yes. This is really a neat piece. Yes. This, um, I was trying to create a calendar. All my products always have something related to consumption. So uh, I was trying to create a calendar, but we, that will be uh, somehow connected to a product, a consumption of a product. So I decided to do this for a, a coffee brand. These are coffee cups for coffee machines that use these kinds of coffee cups. They are individ individual portions. The idea here uh, is that the coffee cups will be coming with this um, numbers and you can just place them in this calendar and every day when you wake up and get your cup of coffee you'll see what is in that day your your uh, appointments your schedule and then uh, you can after that you can drink your coffee and another thing uh, this kind of coffee uh, they have very good coffee however it's kind of hard to keep this organized so right. usually uh, the people that like to use this kind of coffee they just throw them all inside of a drawer or something so this is also something nice to organize keep organizing and bring function uh, for the customer and it's also a nice piece that will be an addition like an accent for a kitchen for example right I love the way you think through projects and make them very applicable to day-to-day -day life. I could be here all day with you, <laughs> learning, creating. What else can we help the audience understand about design? As that gentleman said, design is everything, everything. The basics of a good design and the good relationship between form and function, that the combination of them both, it will make a good design, uh, form, which will be aesthetics right. and function, it will be the efficiency. And for a company, really put them at the head of the pack, so to speak, in their categories. Because some companies just don't get it. They think that, oh, design is frivolous or you know, certain communication outlets are not really important. Maybe we don't hire a professional, we hire you know, an intern, so to speak. Yes. And uh, your response to that is? Which is crazy because uh, as we can see uh, now, the brands of the companies are the most valuable uh, thing the company owns. For example, Coke is all about the branding they have, and how about if they didn't have a good, a good, a good packaging or a good logo? You right. know? So fortunately, they they have a great packaging and great logo, but how about not? So you have to make good choices in the mm -hmm. beginning because uh, those choices are gonna last forever, you know. Uh, 
since the name, the logo, the approach in the visual, entire visual identity, mm -hmm. the packaging, you have to make right choices. Other than that, in some point, you have to, you're gonna have to change. And then I'm looking at Apple and how they just their earnings. They have quite a cash surplus. Let's just say that nobody would blink at that or push that away from their yes. balance sheets. Yes. So design is involves skill, talent. It takes time, but it's very important to set yourself apart in the marketplace. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Oh, it's been such a pleasure and such a treat to see some of your work. I know we've just touched the surface, but thank you for inspiring me and hopefully you all are inspired too. Remember, great design is everything. Thanks for tuning into this segment of Frame. Sponsored by Allegra, Cedar Rapids CrossFit, Click Marketing Solutions, Dial Folio Jewelry.